This is question number 97 from book number one based on the 2020 NEC. And this is electricaltime.com. There is a 120 volt slash 240 volt panel installed with a concrete wall opposite it. What is the minimum working space in front of the panel and the minimum working space with? Okay. So we have a couple of choices here. We have A, uh, 36 inches deep and 24 inches wide. Uh, B, 36 inches deep and 36 inches wide. C, 36 inches deep and 36 inches wide. Or is it D, 42 inches deep and 38 inches wide? Just want to take 30 seconds to let you know what we do here at electricaltime.com. We do online electrical classes from the comfort of your home. And then we also have this free service. So if you click on the subscribe for free NEC questions, Monday through Friday, you'll get an NEC code question and an answer sent to your email. All right, so back to our video. And again, you know, we're looking at that circuit breaker panel and we're asking ourselves, okay, what's the minimum working depth that's in front of it? And how wide does that working space need to be? All right, so the answer to this question is going to be B, and that's 36 inches deep and 30 inches wide, All right? And the, the clue here is I see working space, and I know right away, that I'm going to go to table 110.26A1, and that's going to be in Article 110 for requirements for electrical installations. That's going to be in Chapter 1, General. And then we look at the parts, and we find Part 2, and that talks about 1,000 volts nominal or less. Then we find Table 110.26A1, and that's for working space. And then we have to take a look at the notes to the table. And again, we're looking at table 110.26, a one note. And we are looking at condition number two. All right, so let's do this. Let's go take a look at the table together, and then we'll come back to our textbook. All right, so here's the table. Uh, also, I'm going to talk about something called NFPA link. It's having the code book on your phone and uh, just go check it out at NFPA.org. It's a fantastic tool. Uh, they give you, I think, a two week free trial and it's 10 bucks a month. You can't beat it. Again, definitely check out the NFPA link uh, at NFPA.org. All right, so this is table 110.26A1. It's called working space. And it talks about the minimum clear distance. Now, the first thing we have to do is look at the nominal voltage to ground. And in our panel, it was a 120 slash 240. So we're looking at 120 volts to ground. So that's going to be the first uh, voltage here which is 0 to 150 and then you know we're looking at you know condition 1 condition 2 and condition 3 and we have to look at the notes to this table so uh, notes to a table are enforceable but informational notes to a table are not enforceable so you got to be real careful about that these are notes and they are part of the table so condition one what that says that we have the exposed live parts on one side of the working space and there are no live or grounded parts on the other side of the working space or exposed live parts on both sides of the working space that are effectively guarded by insulating materials. So that's not the condition here. Let's take a look at condition number two. Uh, exposed live parts on one side of the working space and that would be the circuit breaker panel and grounded parts on the other side of the working space. And here they talk about concrete brick or wall tiles shall be considered as grounded and then condition three you know just says that there's exposed line parts on both sides of the working space so we can clearly see here 
that condition two is the correct choice. And if we look at the intersection of the voltage that we have for 120 volts to ground, we can see that we need three feet of working space in front of this panel. All right, so let's go back into our textbook and see what we have to say about this. So let's take a look at table 110.26A1 working space, and that's what we just did. We were told that the voltage of the panel is 12240. When we were looking at the voltages in the table, we are looking at the normal voltage to ground. So that tells us that we are looking at 120 volts, which is the voltage to ground. We are not looking at the line to line voltage, which in this case would be 240 volts. So be careful not to make that mistake. Since we have 120 volts to ground, we look at the first row, which is 0 to 150 volts. And we have a choice of condition 1, condition 2, or condition three so let's look at the notes to this table which we just did and we see that condition two tells us that we can have live parts on one side and grounded parts on the other side and it gives us examples of concrete brick and wall tile that are considered as grounded so therefore condition two is the correct choice in front of this panel, we must have at least three feet of working space as the depth. Okay. Also, we're going to take a look at 110.26A2 called the width of the working space. And this requires the width of that space to be at least 30 inches. Or if the electrical equipment is wider than 30 inches, then it's going to be the width of that electrical equipment. Also keep in mind that any door opening to the electrical equipment must be able to open to at least 90 degrees. So if that door doesn't open up to 90 degrees, then it's no good. All right, so again in 110.26A2, you know, we talked about the width of the working space. So it can't be less than 30 inches, but if the equipment is wider than 30 inches, you know, if it's 48 inches or if it's 60 inches or whatever it is, you know, that's going to be the minimum width of that working space. But in no case can it be less than 30 inches. And you got to make sure that door can open up to at least 90 degrees. All right. And again, the answer to this question is going to be B. And that is 36 inches deep and 30 inches wide. Code reference 110.26A1 working space. That's going to be condition two. And also 110.26A2 for the width of the working space.